Uh, today we're going to be going through uh, selecting plugins, uh, best practice for selecting plugins, how to choose plugins, how to look at for warning signs of plugins that may may affect your system. Uh, if you just like pointers on, on selecting and installing and keeping plugins up to date. So plugins are essentially little, little programs inside WordPress that do a specific task. So it could be a, a little mailer, it could be testimonials. So if you want to add testimonials to your site, you can actually add it, uh, which is great because uh, it, it, it's just a way of, of tools that are building up your, uh, building up your site. Uh, also with plugins, uh, less is more. Uh, I've, I've taken on some sites. We try we try keep our sites between five and ten plugins maximum uh, for a, for a website. Uh, we try to keep that even lower. Sometimes we can get away with about three plugins: that being security plugin, maybe an SEO plugin, and uh, and a caching plugin. Uh, and literally that's it. Uh, we've been very very fortunate, and those those sites generally run really really well. Uh, E-commerce sites probably require. 10 to 20 plugins, depending, uh, for various things. It could be scrollers for products, it could be minimum quantities, those kind of things. So I'm just going to take you through the pitfalls of selecting a uh, plugins, where to find them, just general idea, good practices to, to follow. So obviously if we're looking here at the, the, the WordPress screen, uh, plugins are on the left hand side over here, and we just go to install plugins. Uh, as you can see, I've got two installed plugins at the moment. Uh, I find got, both of these are, are, are deactivated, they're not active. Uh, and I've, joined, I've taken over a lot of sites where the, the people have 30, 40 plugins installed and only 10 are active. Then uh, there's no point in keeping those unactive uh, plugins, rather just delete them, get them off the system so you don't have to worry about it. It's less holes in the, in the system. So I think going forward, if you don't need the plugin, just get rid of it. Uh, there's no point in keeping it in there for, for some rainy day if you're not using it. Uh, to delete a plugin, um, I'm going to delete this Hello Dolly plugin that gets installed uh, automatically by WordPress. We just delete it, it's gone. Now the system doesn't have to worry about keeping that one up to date or tracking that it needs to be up to date, tracking that it's not active those kind of things. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through uh, a, a bit of best practices for for plugins. So if we go to the WordPress site, which is over here, and we go to the plugin section, there we go, once it opens, yeah, we go to the plugins and we can see how there's 55,000 plugins that are available on uh, WordPress. Some have got five, six million installed, some have one install. So it, it really, really depends. There's, there's hundreds of plugins that do the same thing. It's just sometimes it's just a good idea to follow good guidelines when it comes to choosing plugins. So if we go, if we go down here, uh, popular plugins, we go see all the plugins here. And you can see like Contact Form 7 has over 5 million active installations, Yoast SEO has over 5 million. So these are like the, the super heavyweight plugins uh, that are on the internet that are used by most people. Uh, I have had exposure to almost all of those plugins. I, I've used them in one form or another on, on most of my sites. But let's say, let's say you're at your site here and we want to say add a new plugin. So I click over there and we want to add in say testimonials. Okay, so we go here, testimonial, okay so now what, what we're looking at for the, now obviously you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, just six, uh, we carry on going down, it, it was just, there'll be just more and more testimonials, testimonials is quite a common thing uh, to have installed. So what we want to do is, when, when looking at the page, there's a few things you want to look at, you want to look at the rating which is over here, this, is, this has got a five star rating. You're looking at the active installs, you're looking at the last update, uh, and then making sure that it's compatible with your version of WordPress. Now to get more details about the, the plugin, we just go, we click on it, and it'll give you more details. And this, this is the same information that appears at WordPress. So if I click on contact form seven, you can see it's the same information that appears at WordPress. But now I can actually see that information inside the site. Uh, I look down here and I see it's uh, last updated one week ago. It's nice to look at the change log and you can see the, the how, how often it's been updated. So you can see that this is one, two, three, four, 
four times just in this month alone, uh, which means it's been updated quite regularly. It's keeping track with, uh, uh, it's, it's very, very active. Uh, people are actually looking after it, and that's a, it's a good thing. Uh, you want somebody who actually has a vested interest to actually look after that plugin. Uh, we go down here. Uh, it's got uh, quite, a, quite nice instructions. Uh, it's got good installation instructions. Uh, it has a FAQ. Uh, sometimes the frequently asked questions actually appear to another website, which is also a good thing, because uh, here you can see you can go to the plugin homepage and you can get more information on that plugin. So this looks like, in all intents and purposes, it looks like a really, really good plugin. Uh, but we'll go look at one of the other ones. Uh, and, and what I'm saying is, is by choosing these, uh, the plugins, even though it has 50,000, one may have 1,000, not, not a reflection that it's a bad plugin, it's just, it's just some things that you need to look out for when choosing a plugin. You don't really have the knowledge to be able to fix the issue or you'd need a developer to fix a problem if something happens. I'm going to testimonial basics and you can see this was updated one month ago it is compatible with uh, this version of wordpress we look at the change log uh, it doesn't really have dates here but uh, it's got 9,000 active installs it looks like a very very good plugin it doesn't look bad at all uh, but if i was if i was a betting person i'd probably say okay let me go for the one that's uh, probably the, the strongest or the best and take it I'd take it from there so I take this strong testimonials I'll install now by just clicking on that button and activating as soon as uh, as it becomes active and here we go active activate and it should take me to the plugins list uh, actually this one actually has taken me to uh, a bit of an instruction this makes it probably an even better plugin the nice thing about this plugin also is that it actually has uh, uh, pro add-ons so you can actually get more features for for this plugin they it's literally it's a plugin where they offer the basic uh, basic features for free and if you want to do more advanced things then uh, you, you, you you need to buy the the upgrades similar with security plugins I know I theme security and uh, word fence and all those kind of plugins you can buy the security that gives you the basic security that protects your site or you can go for the pro version that gives you even more uh, granular kind of control over your site but yeah so that's that's how easy it is to to install a plugin via the wordpress backend and there you can see strong testimonials uh, um, what i'm going to do is i'm just going to delete uh, the anti-spam there and I just literally only have one plugin that I need to look at, look out for. Now, there's various other ways of getting plugins. It's either through the WordPress front end, and that's normally free plugins. Uh, generally, it's free plugins. Uh, there's uh, you can get it through GitHub or another Git repo place uh, that that stores websites. That's a little bit more technical that you uh, to to download and install the plugin. But it's also a great way of finding the kind of plugins that haven't been released for. Uh, on WordPress, but are available uh, for you to download. Another place is you can go to a place like, uh, I think this is Code Canyon. Uh, this has got uh, hundreds of different plugins uh, for various things from e-commerce plugins, WordPress plugins, uh, utilities. Uh, these generally you always buy, uh, and it has various licenses in, in regard with them. The, the better the plugin, the more expensive uh, it, it will be. Uh, and if we go here, here's GitHub. This is GitHub over here, another place to look for, for plugins. And you can see here, like WooCommerce, if we went here, back to this, we go back. You can see uh, WooCommerce is a very, very active plugin here. And there we go. Very, very active plugin. And yeah, we can see the same one over here. The nice thing is you click into WooCommerce and GitHub. And you can see it's got 712 contributors. Now some repos maybe have two contributors. So you've got two people that look after the site. This has 712. You're looking at how many commits it's had. It's at almost 30,000 commits, 28,000 commits. So this is a very, very active uh, active plugin. There's a lot of changes, like 20 hours, two months, nine, nine days ago. So it's very, very actively maintained. So this is the kind of plugin that you should choose to work with on your site. Code Canyon. Uh, Literally, the nice, the other, what, what you can look for in Code Canyon, like if you look here, it says eleven dollars, only one sale, so only one person has literally bought this this plugin, 
it's probably just been uh, just been added to the system. But yeah, you, you want to look at uh, the author. Uh, let me go down here. Oh, here we go. More items from Gambit Tech. So you're looking at, you say, these are the kind of uh, more plugins that this developer has developed. So they're very, very active at developing plugins. You're looking at the kind of support that uh, people have given. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's in, it's in Code Canyon's best interest to have plugins that are secure and, and safe. So it, it, it is a, a healthy place to go buy plugins. Another way that I find to choose plugins is sometimes you don't really know which plugins you, you're looking for. Uh, I just literally go through to uh, uh, Google. I type best security plugins. It says the, these are the seven best security plugins available for WordPress. Da -da 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 -da. There's hundreds of articles that you can go read on on what other people have done and they've tested the software. I, I use this all the time. Uh, it, is a, it is a great way of, of using the knowledge that's available on the internet. One thing to look out for is always look at the dates. Okay. Uh, many times somebody will read an article from 2013 or 2014 and those are very, very out of date. Uh, WordPress is a, is a thing that gets updated monthly, uh, actually sometimes weekly. Uh, so security protocols or security plugins from a year ago are not going to be the same as the security plugins that, that are available now. So it's probably best to always choose the one in the year. We're in June. There's June the 4th, 2018. Right now I can obviously go look at this one and, uh, and, and look at what they've, they've recorded about what the plugins are out there. Then there's also literally there's plugins that are available directly on the internet. Uh, so here we've got Gravity Forms. I use Gravity Forms ex exclusively for, for all my development sites. Uh, I know there's Ninja Forms, there's quite a few other forms. Uh, here you, you purchase directly from them. Uh, very, very reputable company. And at the end of the day, you can go look at the website, you can look at their forums, you can look at their frequently asked questions, and then you'll understand uh, what kind of support uh, that company gives towards their plugin. But yes, a few basic rules, like I said, in conclusion, plugins are literally every single WordPress site has plugins. Uh, I'd say less is more. Always try to have as few plugins as possible. Try not have any inactive plugins available in your site while they have them deleted. Uh, when looking for a plugin, try to find a plugin that is uh, actively maintained and has quite a lot of uh, resources that help you. Uh, yeah, and that's and that's that's it with the, when it comes to plugins. Uh, it's 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 the one area where you can add functionality to your site, uh, and if you just obey those basic basic rules, it's a it's a great way of extending the functionality of your site uh, at no cost in some places. But it is an area that you need to look after. Make sure you don't have too many. And yeah, that's about it. Listen, guys, I, I hope you enjoyed the video. I have a few other ones on, on theme selection and best practices for uh, select, uh, certain plugins. Uh, I have a series on security. But yeah, uh, I'll put all the links below in the, the comment, uh, in the, the about for this video. But listen guys, I hope you have a great day and enjoyed the video. Chat soon. Bye.